Hello and welcome to the Digitizing Europe Summit here in Berlin. I'm here with uh, Michael Osborne, who is an Associate Professor in Machine Learning at the University of Oxford. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. <laughs> Michael, should we be afraid of robots? I think to some extent we need to be concerned about the impact of robots and autonomous systems more generally on employment. So in particular, we've done some work recently highlighting that as much as 47% of current US employment might be at threat due to computerization, the replacement of those jobs by machines. And you also had some recent results on Europe as well, haven't you? Yeah. That's right. So our, our work has been reproduced for a number of European countries. Recently, we reproduced the analysis for the UK. We've found that 35% of current employment is at high risk. Mm. And will this, uh, what has been called the second era of machines, the second machine age, will that affect all professions equally or are there particular professions, I would guess, which are more likely to be under threat? Your, your guess is absolutely correct. So one of the most alarming findings of our own work was that the burden of computerizability will most heavily fall upon the shoulders of the least skilled. So there was a very strong negative trend between the probability of a job's computerization and its degree of skill as measured by education or income. So I think this is alarming because it will only highlight um, the existing inequalities in our society. We can only expect those to get worse as a result of these new technologies. So do you think that digitization will inevitably make society more unequal than it actually already is? Or No, no, I don't think any of this is inevitable. I mean, I wouldn't work in the field I do, that of machine learning, if I felt that this was necessarily a bad thing for society. The purpose of our own work is to highlight these challenges to policymakers, to make sure that we really are developing a framework that's able to benefit both from the enormous wealth that will be generated by these technologies, or making sure that it really is shared amongst all those who may suffer as a result. What do you think needs to happen in order to avoid this loss of job due to digitization? You just mentioned education. What, what really should happen here in this field? Right, so education is certainly one core component of the necessary response. So we need to be making sure that the workers of tomorrow are equipped to work with machines rather than like machines. So in particular, I think we need to make sure that the students we're teaching are equipped with the creative and social intelligence they need to not simply be substituted by machines. And the good news is that in equipping students with these skills, we have the powers of technology on our side. So for example, we've seen the rise of MOOCs, massive open online courses that are able to deliver education at a scale that's completely unprecedented. And I think similar technologies will allow us to really make sure that everybody is able to um, compete in tomorrow's workplace. Um, in your presentation earlier today, you also um uh, mentioned that some cognitive skills that humans have are not that easily replaceable mm. by algorithms, by software. Where do computers need our help? Right, so the, uh, one core contribution of our work, I think, is the identification of these three bottlenecks to automation. So I've spoken already about creativity, which was the first. The second was social intelligence. And the third was the ability to interact with complex objects. So all three of these bottlenecks share a requirement to have a very deep, intuitive understanding of the human environment, to understand how other humans will act, or to understand how they'll appreciate different creative things we might generate. So because of the deep knowledge that's required to perform these tasks, it's difficult to encode the required information in software. It's just difficult to cram all that knowledge into an algorithm. So in executing those kinds of tasks, algorithms will have to work with humans we're going to see the rise of more complementary technologies where humans are providing the social and creative elements to complement the more uh, automated information processing that algorithms can provide. Mm. Um, if you were the Prime Minister of the UK and you could actually set the framework for a successful and also socially responsible uh, digitization, what would you do? Right, so I think the big picture here has to be some form of redistribution to make sure that we're taxing those who are benefiting the most from these new technologies and then investing that so that there is a fund to provide some level of assurance for all in society. I'm, I'm very concerned that as the rate of technology uh, advance only increases, as it accelerates, the sacrifice of jobs on the low skilled end of the spectrum is not going to decline. We're, we're only going to see ever increasing churn in those jobs. So we do need to make sure that there's some kind of safety net for those workers. 
Thank you very much, Michael, for your time. It's been a very great pleasure. Thank you.